What's in a playbook? This short video describes the common types of content that all IACD playbooks should contain. Why are common types of content so important? Why not have all IACD participants construct playbooks as they see fit? Simple. Playbooks are meant to be used and shared among and across organizations. The vast IACD community needs a common definition of what content is found in all playbooks so we can all be consistent and speak the same language. Here's an example playbook on mitigating a compromised device. A playbook is first and foremost a set of process-oriented steps that enable an organization to meet the requirements specified in its policies and procedures. It represents a general security process at its most basic level, which means a playbook can be implemented in a completely manual fashion or increasingly automated as appropriate for an organization. Playbooks are written for a human to understand, not a machine. You and I are the target audience. Let's examine the types of content found in this example that are common to all IACD playbooks. The first type of content found in an IACD playbook is the initiating condition. An organization adopts many different security processes and procedures, where each one is invoked in response to a different predefined condition. For example, a compromised device has been identified, as in the example here, or a server is not responding. This predefined condition is the initiating condition for a playbook. So, the purpose of an initiating condition is to identify the event or circumstance that the documented security process is designed to address. Also, since playbooks should be generalized for broad applicability across organizations, they should include an initiating condition that triggers the playbook but exclude the mechanism that created said initiating condition. Why? Because including the mechanism would add extraneous detail and require creating and maintaining more playbooks that are specific for each mechanism. Organizations can use the generalized playbooks to develop multiple workflows, showing how the creation mechanism would be addressed. Further specialization is also possible based on sectors, technologies, regulatory bodies, or other market discriminators. The second type of content found in an IACD playbook is the process steps. Every security process consists of the major activities an organization should conduct to satisfy policies and procedures in response to an initiating condition, regardless of the organization's process, maturity, or level of automation. These process steps are the core content of a playbook. For example, generate response actions, authorize response, quarantine, etc., as in the example here. Organizations can use the generalized playbooks to develop workflows and subsequent local instance definitions, containing more granular details on the prescribed actions. Process steps should show an incremental path toward full automation. The intent is to encourage automation while still maintaining appropriate human oversight or involvement in the process, which local policies or procedures may require. Process steps should include oversight steps with the verbs like authorize, select, or approve. Human in the loop activities should be differentiated from those that could be automated through either color coding or another process lean as shown in this example. These oversight types of activities also appear in more detail in workflows derived from playbooks. Process steps should represent what things should be done, not how things should be done, to keep them generalized for use across different organizations. They should not be so detailed that organizations think a playbook does not apply to them because they don't do it that way. The third type of content found in an IACD playbook is the best practices and local policies. Some activities may be conducted in addition to the core set of process steps, depending on the industry or community an organization is associated with. These activities should be included as optional best practices. For example, 
taking a forensic image of a compromised device's memory, scanning from malware, or removing unauthorized software, as in the example here. This way, all the best practices can be identified, but multiple playbooks are not needed to cover all the different policies for different sectors or organizations. Industry best practices can vary by sector. For example, the financial industry. Examples are asset type, mobile devices, organizational risk tolerance, and local security process maturity. Local policies are unique to an organization and must be accurately captured to ensure an organization meets its own business requirements. Activities denoting best practices and local policies should be differentiated from the core security automation and orchestration process steps, which are applicable to all Playbook users by appearing in their own swim lane as shown. Best practices that are adopted by an organization should migrate and be injected into the core SA and O swim lanes, but differentiated by using either different colors or symbols to allow for easy identification. This tailored playbook can be used to create workflows or identify existing vendor or community workflows that meet an organization's needs. The fourth type of content found in an IACD playbook is the end state. A playbook defines a set of steps in response to an initiating condition in accordance with local policy, with the objective being to achieve some result with respect to the system state or awareness of the environment. That is the end state of a playbook. So, the purpose of an end state is to clearly convey the desired result of a playbook. For example, a device is restored to its authorized state, as in the example here, or compliance with local policy is achieved. Why should playbacks end in a clearly and unambiguously delineated end state? Because without a discreetly defined ending to the process steps, playbook implementers could second guess when a playbook ending actually occurs, leading to confusion and consistency in process step creep. Implementers would ask the question, when is enough enough? Alternatively, a playbook could initiate a different or complementary playbook. In this case, the end state of one playbook may be the initiating condition of another playbook. The fifth and final type of content found in an IACD playbook is the relationship to governance or regulatory requirements. A playbook defines a set of process steps which are in response to an initiating condition and in accordance with local policy in order to reach the end state. This playbook content type identifies the mapping of key process steps to the appropriate security controls, regulatory requirements, or other governance-related requirements addressed by the playbook. A significant playbook benefit is in showing how it supports consistent application and implementation of security processes and associated controls. Playbooks can be a powerful tool in helping an organization map its governance or regulatory obligations to the process steps detailed within, which is especially important during system security audits when gaps in process implementation are most commonly found. For example, U.S. federal government organizations would benefit from seeing how a playbook can help ensure that NIST SP 800-53 security control requirements are applied while financial organizations may need to map to payment card industry data security standard PCI-DSS. The goal is to enable organizations to create and select playbooks to help them improve the processes that they are required to implement and for which they are subject to compliance verification. A playbook should capture, as an added component within itself, the relationship between the playbook as a whole and any applicable governance or regulatory requirements that it supports.